When We Awake by Glenn Hall. Chapter 4. Offerings in the Outer Court. Repentance. Reading from Leviticus chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. If a person sins in hearing the utterance of an oath and is a witness, whether he has seen or known of the matter, if he does not tell it, he bears guilt. Or if a person touches any unclean thing, whether it is the carcass of an unclean beast or the carcass of unclean livestock or the carcass of unclean creeping things and he is unaware of it, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touches human uncleanness, whatever uncleanness with which a man may be defiled, and he is unaware of it, when he realizes it, then he shall be guilty. Or if a person swears, speaking thoughtlessly, with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatever it is that a man may pronounce by an oath, and he is unaware of it, when he realizes it, then he shall be guilty in any of these matters. And it shall be when he is guilty in any of these matters that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. And he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord for his sin which he has committed, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin. Again, that's Leviticus chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. And now reading from Till We Have Faces on page 111. When I saw a west wind, I was neither glad nor afraid at first. I felt ashamed. But what of? Psyche, they hadn't stripped you naked or anything. No, no, Maya. Ashamed of looking like a mortal. Ashamed of being a mortal. But how could you help that? Don't you think that the thing people are most ashamed of are the things they can't help? From C.S. Lewis's book, Till We Have Faces, page 111. Psyche felt ashamed in the presence of her God. She understood that she was a mere mortal made of flesh. This speaks of understanding one's own sinful nature and of needing to depend upon God to someday change that nature. Leviticus chapter 5 deals with the trespass offering. And it is interesting that the Hebrew word for the trespass offering is the a shame offering. The trespass offering literally turns out to be the offering one made because he was ashamed of his sins. According to Leviticus 5 verse 5, the offerer had to confess explicit sins before the offering was presented to God. The a shame offering corresponds to our need for the daily repentance that God requires. The bronze altar of the tabernacle, upon which all of the sacrifices were offered, speaks of sanctification, the salvation of the soul. It also reveals God's judgment upon the flesh, or sinful nature of man. A sinful nature that lasts even after one comes to faith in Christ and remains until glorification. The bronze medal of the altar symbolizes God's judgment on sin. This is perhaps most clearly seen in the passage from Numbers chapter 16, where it says that fire came out from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering incense on bronze censers. Numbers 16, verse 35. These men were leaders of Israel, and they co-conspired with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram against the authority of Moses and Aaron. Their rebellion against God's delegated authority meant that they had, in fact, rejected the Lord. Thus they were consumed by his fire for this sin against their own souls. That's what the scripture says in verses 30 and 38 of number 16. Afterwards, Aaron took the 250 bronze censers, hammered them out, and made them into a covering for the bronze altar. We see that in Numbers 16, verse 39. 
Remember that Korah and his followers all partook of the Passover lamb when they came out of Egypt with all of Israel. They therefore were saved individuals regarding their spirits. They prefigure Christians who believe in the efficacy of Jesus' blood for the forgiveness of sins. Yet they still rejected the Lord and were judged severely for this rejection. We understand from this that Christians too may reject the Lord in a similar fashion. This rejection often takes the form of disobedience to his explicit command so clearly given us in his word. Consider also the snake that Moses lifted in the desert in Numbers chapter 21 verses 5 through 9. The scriptures say, And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten when he looks at it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. All of Israel stood in the position of spiritual salvation at this point. They had believed in God. They had offered the Passover lamb, and the angel of death had passed over them. Their spirits were saved, but their soul loathed this worthless bread. What was this worthless bread? It was the manna that fell from heaven, or the food from heaven. The manna itself was natural food, but it typified spiritual food. It represented the Lord Jesus himself, the bread of life. By speaking against the manna, Israel showed that they rejected the very God that led them. In consequence, God judged some of them with immediate death. Moses interceded for the rest, and God commanded him to fashion a bronze, fiery serpent and raise it up on a pole. God did not remove the serpents immediately, but provided a remedy for their poison. Israel had to look upon the bronze serpent so that judgment would be abated. Again, we see bronze standing in the place of judgment, and thus we conclude that this metal symbolizes God's judgment upon sin, and in particular, of sin within the believer. Similarly, God has not yet removed the serpent from our flesh. He has covered our sin, yes, but he has not yet removed our sin nature. Until then, we must confess and repent of our sins, looking to Jesus on the pole, on the cross, for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus took the sting of the serpent for us. This is the prophetic significance of the bronze medal. The trespass offering, the ashamed offering, is the fifth of the offerings introduced in Leviticus. It demonstrates typologically the very first works of a newborn Christian, which is repentance of known sin. Detailed instructions for the trespass offering are found in Leviticus 5 through 7. The primary aspect of trespass offerings deals with atonement for intentional sins committed after salvation. According to Leviticus 5.5, the offerer must confess that he has sinned in a particular thing. This typifies or symbolizes the place where every Christian should begin his pilgrim walk in this world, which is repentance from sin. This corresponds to the very first elementary teaching of Christ found in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Before one begins such a walk, though he first believes upon the Lord Jesus for salvation from the effects of his sin, 
Christ's blood establishes the expiation or the atonement or propitiation, which means conciliation with God, for our sins. His blood provides our justification before God and results in new spiritual life. The angel of spiritual death thus passes over us. The Passover sacrifice that Israel performed under Moses typifies all of this. Remember, a biblical type is a historical thing or event that prophetically pictures a future spiritual thing or reality. Again, a biblical type is a historical thing or event that prophetically pictures a future spiritual thing or reality. After initial faith in Jesus, one begins or should begin to learn the ways of the Lord. He should learn God's law so that he will know what God considers to be sin. For, as John tells us, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. When one commits a sin after coming to faith, he is convicted by the law as a lawbreaker and must make atonement for that sin. Many Christians believe that their initial belief in Jesus already atones for these intentional and unintentional sins that they commit after salvation, but the Bible does not teach this. The trespass offering shows the continuing necessity to come to God for forgiveness of sins even after salvation. Many writers from the New Testament reveal this same truth. The initial purpose of Jesus' sacrifice is to establish peace with God through him, through Jesus. Romans 5 verse 1. Jesus' death reconciles alienated mankind to his creator. We see this in Romans 5 verse 10 and 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18. Hebrews also tells us that this great offering cleanses our conscience from dead works or from sins in order to enable us to serve the living God. That's Hebrews 9 verse 14. <clears throat> Paul teaches that once we have faith in Christ's work of reconciliation with God, we shall be, future tense, we shall be saved by his life. Romans 5 verse 10. God purposed that our reconciliation with him would provide the basis by which we might reign in life through the one, through Jesus Christ. That's Romans 5 verse 17. But this speaks of potential positions of rule available to Christians in the coming kingdom of God. He does not guarantee a position of rulership with Christ. It is available to all who believe, but... It will only be achieved by those who receive, actively take hold of Christ's abundance of grace and gift of righteousness, according to Romans 5.17. Paul thus instructs us to work out our own salvation in fear and trembling. That's Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. If we desire to see God's face, then we must desire the character that goes with it. End of part one of chapter four of When We Awake by Glenn Hall.